Hey folks, it's me, Dr. Mike Isertel for Renaissance Periodization, and I have a question for you. Are you doing too much volume in your muscle growth training plan to get your best growth possible? And if you are doing too much volume, how can you tell? Like intellectually, we know for sure there's doing too little. If you did like one push-up a day, I can't say your chest is going to grow as much as it would if you did more than one push-up a day. But there's also a certain number of, well, anything but push-ups per day that you can do when it tires you out so much and it taxes your recovery ability so much that you could get better doing less volume. Now, we know through just talking to people that a lot of people have experimented with high volume programs and then they went back to lower volume programs and got the gains of their lives after going back to lower volume, which is a very clear way to illustrate. This happens to tons of people. As a matter of fact, it's, if it's happened to you in the uh, in the video uh please just hit up, uh, hit us up in the comments. Tell us your story. Tell us about a time where you used to do higher volume programs and you were getting eh, results or good results, but not amazing. And then you switched to lower volumes and things went better. You can also tell us the opposite story if you time where, you know, you did less and then you did more and it got better. That's less of a mysterious thing because we know volume has a dose response relationship. Up to a point, the more volume you do, the better. But here we're talking about what that point is and what this curve on this end looks like. Because you still make gains on this end. Here's the zero point. All the way from the peak gains to no gains, there's still gains to be made. We want to make sure that if you're here, we put you back over here. That you're doing less volume but getting the same or even better growth. How do we go about intellectually examining that? We know it's a real thing in the world. First thing, biggest thing. If you are hitting mini PRs in reps or load, you're doing 200 pounds for 11 reps versus 10. You're doing 205 pounds for 10 reps versus 200 pounds for 10 reps last time. If you're making these little progressions on average over time, you're good to go. Fundamentally, you don't need to care about this at all. You're really good to go. Your volume is not fundamentally misaligned. It's clearly within, between your minimum effective volume and maximum recoverable because you're making gains, duh. And you can always keep going and just make changes at the margins. Do a little bit of less volume and do a little bit more volume. So that's definitely a thing. That means you can just keep training the same and not change a thing. However, however, we have to ask the next question is like, yes, okay, you're making PRs, but maybe if you did lower volumes, you would make even bigger PRs in uh, your performance. You could do more reps every week on average, more weight every week on average because you're not as tired from all that volume and potentially grow even more muscle doing less volume. And again, we know this happens practically. We've talked to lots of people who it happened to. Please share your story below if you want. And we know theoretically it has to occur because the maximum adaptive volume at the top of the curve is pretty far away from the maximum recoverable volume. And you could be doing a lot of work in between here that's like more work than you should be doing for less results than you should be getting. Still positive results, but you could be spending less time in the gym doing less work, having more fun doing it because you're less fatigued. You can get stronger, faster, and everything could go better. How do you know if you're in that position? Well, first, there are more likely situations that you're in that position than not, even before doing this alternate way of training, this big change that I'll propose later in this video for the, the very serious of you that really do think, man, I, I really do think I'm doing way too much. Before you conclude you're doing way too much, let me read you off a list of likely situations in which every single checklist item that you check, this applies to me, this applies to me, this applies to me, builds our case a little bit more that you're probably doing a little bit too much and could benefit more likely by pulling back. So here's the thing. First, if you're objectively, as compared to the studied population of athletes, doing a higher end of volume. So for example, if you tell me, yeah, man, I do three sets of chest per week, I think I'm overdoing it. Come on. The direct literature says you can, on average, handle a lot more. Now, maybe you have a particular case where your genetics and recovery are weird, and for you, three sets of chest a week is too much, but like, I don't think that's the case. However, if per session, let's say you hit chest twice a week or three times a week, if per session for chest, as an example, for any muscle here, you're doing consistently more than eight working sets, you're doing a lot of volume. And the chance that it's not enough volume is very low. The chance that it's a little bit too much volume to get your best gains, this exact uh, subject of this video, is pretty decent. If you're telling me you're doing eight sets of chest three times a week, but your chest isn't progressing as much as you want, 
I'm not inclined to believe that more chest work is probably the right answer. If you're doing four sets of chest three times a week, I'm inclined to believe that doing five or six or seven will get you better results. So first check mark is you're doing plenty of volume. And for me, plenty of volume is eight sets per muscle group or above. For reference, Jeff Nippard's analysis of the data shows that about six hardworking sets per muscle per session is basically optimum. So this is eight. It's even further removed with more volume down on that end of the spectrum. So it's unlikely that it's not enough. Now, it's possible that it's not enough, but less likely than it is you're doing a little bit too much. Next, your performance plateaus maybe even every two to three weeks and you have to back off. You feel like you're training a ton, and every two to three weeks, you get so tired that you're unable to beat your match your reps from last time. You take a recovery half week, you take a deload, everything gets better, you do it again, and within two to three weeks, you crash and burn again. That is another thing telling me you're trying to do a little bit too much volume at a time. Another one is oftentimes your muscles feel flat and tired and empty. People talk uh, you know, about how their training feels and they're like, man, I fucking love this low volume training. Get in there. My muscles are swollen. I get fucked up, sore. Every single rep, I feel like they're going to explode. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And they're like, what do you, th- how's your training? I feel really tired and like drained, but like it's high volume. You're supposed to feel like that. Now, if it's high volume and you're recovering from it, you're not supposed to feel like that. If it's high volume and you're barely recovering and making small gains, but you're carrying way more fatigue than you should be, it will feel like this, that tired, drained, no pump feeling. That's not a good thing. That means you're doing a little bit too much and you could back off. So there's another little hint. Another one is your pump peaks early in the workout and then recedes during the rest of the workout. So if you're doing 12 sets for chest, you do some bench presses, your pump is glorious. You do some flies, your pump is the best. Then you do some deficit push-ups, and by the end of deficit push-ups, you actually have less of a chest pump than when you were doing the the flies, and you're like, hey, is this a good idea? No. Your pump is supposed to be the biggest it ever is when you walk out of the gym at the end of the workout. If at some point your pump starts to take a turn for the worse while you're still doing working sets for that muscle group, it's very highly likely that those extra working sets are a bad thing. You would be better off without them. You could grow more without them. And over the course of weeks, to bring it back to the point before this, that your muscles feel tired, et cetera, you could just not be getting great pumps for a few weeks. And you're doing all this volume and you think, well, it's got to have some kind of effect. But if your pumps aren't great and they're usually good with lower volumes, not great. So another more technical way I can put that point is this. If you've trained with a certain amount of volume, let's say 10 sets per week per muscle group, and you got a good pump on average, now that you're training with 15 you're getting a worse pump on average per session, very possible, I would even say likely, that you're still making gains, but not as many as you could because you're on that excessively high end of, of training volume. Another hint is if your muscles are chronically still sore before you hit them again. If you train hamstrings on Monday and Thursday, and on Thursday, you're still brutally sore from what you did Monday, you're still trying to train through that soreness. That was me under the table doing mock leg curls, by the way then what are you doing? Your muscles still need to recover, still need to grow. That's what soreness is. And in the middle of that process, you're saying, we got to go again. That's almost by definition doing too much volume. In this case, it's some combination of volume or frequency that you're doing wrong. But in in, in any case, if your muscles have plenty of time to heal and or they don't get super sore, you know, you're, you might be overreaching, but not a super big concern, but if you're hammering your muscles before they've had a chance to recover and you're doing this often, you're probably at least doing too much volume uh, versus what you could be doing optimally. Another one is, especially before those mini deloads you have to take too often, your mind-muscle connection starts to feel a little bit off. Your technique feels a little bit off. It just feels like it's too much stuff. That's a hint that, well, it may be too much stuff. And another last little hint to yourself as to if you're experiencing this, if it's high rep sets, sets of 20 to 30, you can add a rep and or load here and there and still progress. But if it's lower rep sets, sets of 5 to 10, 10 to 15 with heavier weight, you're having a big time progressing. The reason that's the case is as you train with very high volumes, possibly too high, your muscle fibers start to change from being uh, acting like the average slower twitch, faster twitch combo fibers to more of the fibers that used to act in a faster twitch manner, starting to act in a slower twitch manner. And 
slower twitch muscles, as they adapt, their endurance goes up real fast, which is why you get really good at doing high reps and you can progress at high reps. But their cross-sectional area, their size, and their strength doesn't change nearly as much. So when you go and do sets of 5 to 10, if you're really struggling to add load to sets of 5 to 10, and you're doing a ton of volume, and you feel fatigued, and all these things are happening, yeah, you're probably doing a bit too much volume. You need to do less volume so that your fiber type transitions back into a faster twitch so that you begin to progress again in sets of 5 to 10 and 10 to 15 and all the rest of the rep ranges and not just turn into basically like an endurance machine. Now, if you turn into an endurance machine, you can recover really quick, but so can marathon runners. How come they're not jacked? Because they have the fiber type composition that allows them to recover fast and also prevents them from basically growing hardly at all. You do not want to be in that position. You do not want the gym to turn into a place where you do praying at the altar of high volume for meager mana from heaven. You start rebelling against the old gods and then Zeus and shit, they fight, all that stuff happens. Eventually, Arthur Jones comes in and hits everyone. Just kidding. But on a serious note, you don't want to just be doing volume for its own sake. Too much volume for its own sake is really just a bad idea. So how do we pull back away if we're in this position? If you have lots of these signs that I just sort of listed off, you might be doing too much chronic volume, just too much volume all the time. You probably have high fatigue right now, which is all those symptoms of I can't get a pump and all this other stuff. You're probably desensitized to high volume, which means that your body will only grow if you give it high volumes and not that impressively. But if you go back to low volumes, your body's like, I don't even even tell we're training. So it's not going to grow right away from low volumes if you switch, which what a fucking disaster that would be. You're like, okay, I think I'm training with too high volumes. You switch to lower volumes, you go for a month and you barely grow at all. And you're like, okay, well, like, I guess that wasn't it. What am I supposed to do? But it could have been it. You're just carrying way too much fatigue and you're way too desensitized. How do we resensitize you to volume? How do we lower your fatigue so that you can progress again? And the answer is you need a volume reset. What the hell does that mean? Is it like the Great Reset where you dress up in a funny outfit and talk to the World Bank? Maybe, but a little bit simpler. Here it is. We've got a multi-step guide for how to do your volume reset and how to construct your first phase back if you think that you've been doing maybe a little bit too much volume. Here's the deal. First, finish your last mesocycle however it was written. Finish it, do it really well. Instead of taking a deload after, and then just going back into the next mesocycle, take an active rest phase, which means one deload week like normal, and then week one week of doing basically nothing, just like frolicking in the field with your friends, plenty of sleep, plenty of food, plenty of rest. This is going to heal your fatigue like crazy, bring it down, and also start to resensitize your muscles to volume because they're just not experiencing volume for weeks on end. After this, take two to four weeks of additional training at maintenance volume, just enough volume to make sure your muscles don't get any smaller or weaker and no more volume than that. So that while you're training at maintenance volume for two to four weeks, you're maintaining the same physical characteristics. Your body's just the same size and strength. And you're thinking, what the fuck am I doing? I could be getting better, but hold on. Maintenance volume is such low volume that your volume sensitivity, how much growth you will get out of any number of hard sets of training goes up and up and up this entire time. You're essentially prepping the system to begin ready to grow again. Two to four weeks of maintenance volume. How much volume is that? On average, it's going to be about one third of your typical volume. Holy fuck shit. Did I say that right? I sure did. It's really low. And I know it sounds crazy, but you will not lose muscle and strength doing this in almost any case. And anything you do lose in some weird way will come back within two weeks of you starting normal training again. So don't you worry about it. Let me put this into perspective. If on average... Over the course of a week, you do 15 sets of quads for two to four weeks after your active rest is over in this paradigm, you're going to do five sets of quads per week. That means three sets on Monday, two sets on Thursday, and that's it. Try to get them a little heavier than normal. This is not mandatory, but sets of five to 10 generally are better for maintenance than sets of, you know, uh, 10 plus. Focus on technique. It's just going to be like maybe four sessions a week and each session is going to be like 45 minutes. If you're full-time super hardcore trainee that trains six times a week for two hours at a time, it's way less work. Your system 
and your local muscles will build an ability to be sensitive to that volume again. The fatigue will come crashing down. And then after that, you are ready for a really, really serious approach back into training. Then you're ready for real training again. So at the end of that two to four weeks, one of those last week will be a deload as always. So you basically deloaded twice in the last six weeks and then another active rest. You're, you are ready to go. You are very, very sensitive to training volume, which means like if you do two hard sets of curls, you go blow up right away and get a huge pump and super sore. But we don't want to do that yet because we want to ease in. So how does that look like? How do you construct your program back? Because remember, we're not just going to go back to our same crazy high volume program. We suspected it was too much volume, so we're not going to do that. We need to do a slightly different approach. So here it is. First, you build your program as normal. Just build it normally, all the sets and reps and exercises. When it comes to choosing how many sets you start out with, go to half the normal amount. If you normally do four sets of bench press in week one of a program, you're doing two. If you normally do three sets of curls, you're doing one or two sets, air on the side of one. Half the set numbers. This is on purpose. We want to start you out on that lower end of volume and slowly come up to see if you experience better growth with lower volumes. That's the whole purpose of this test. Point number three, keep your volume the same unless there's a very, very clear impetus for you to increase the volume. And then if there is, increase it only by one set at a time per session per week. So for example, if you have a terrible pump, like zero fucking pump, the session is super easy. You got no soreness at all, no doms. You feel uh, like barely doing anything. Okay, you can add a set. But if you're using one of our custom training templates or anything like that, what you want to do is just give middle of the road ratings for even the easy stuff so that your custom template keeps you on the low end of training volume. So only increase if you have a compelling reason to do so, which comports with point number four, that if you have some pumps, some soreness, some fatigue, even if it's not crazy, just leave the volume alone. Remember, those three sets of bench, instead of going to five or six sets of bench, we're going to try keep doing three or four sets of bench for most of the mezzo to see if that lower volume, still effective, just like the higher volume was, is a little bit more effective for less fatigue if we're bringing you closer to that equilibrium point of maximum adaptive volume away from training almost at maximum recovery volume all the time. If you choose to increase a set, add a set to leg press, it had better be because it's just really, really, really profoundly easy, no challenge at all. Anything that remote is like, okay, this is a workout, don't increase from there in most cases. And if you're going to increase, just add one set at a time. So if two sets of leg press was like a clown show for you and you're like, this is nothing, add a third set. Don't go, okay, right back to the old days. I'm going to go right to six. Of course, that's going to torch you, but maybe the torching was too much, which is why we're starting off nice and slow. If you have been overdoing volume and you were correct about it, this new way of going on the lower end of volume, still progressive, still hard training, still quality sets but a little less volume than you're used to should give you better results in rep strength gains in that mesocycle. And I've seen this happen to tons of people. They're doing German high volume training. They're cooking themselves all the time. They take a little break. They come back, they do lower volume. And within three weeks, they're like, I'm hitting fucking mega PRs on every single lift. I feel so strong. This is crazy. And you're like, well, weird how less fatigue makes you feel stronger. You will feel this pretty damn quick. And if that's the case, stick to it you found a new volume baseline, that's your home base now. You can go up a little in volume, you can go down a little in volume, but you found a real good thing that's better than your last thing. So don't just go back to that crazy abusive relationship you've had with training volume. If you think, okay, yeah, this two or three sets per muscle group per session thing works really well, better than the eight sets I was doing, but I think four or five sets could work better. Hey, listen, I believe you. Ease into it though. Try three or four for a while, a few weeks. If that works great, fuck five. Forget about it. Try five some other time. If three or four works okay, try four or five. And if that works way better, hey, then that's your new kind of maximum adaptive volume range. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Two or three sets or three or four sets per muscle per session starts to work way better than eight sets. Don't just be like, all right, that was great. That worked. 
Let's go back to eight sets. Or don't be like, okay, okay, but like six would work really ideally. You don't know that. Your new home base is your new better guess at what you like, at what's good for your body. It doesn't mean it's the ultimate guess, but it means this is where, in a what's called like Bayesian statistical reasoning, you start from the prior assumption of, yeah, yeah, two or three sets seems to be better for me than eight or 10. So instead of cutting the middle and just going right for six or five or whatever, I'm going to hang around two or three and maybe go to three or four and see how it goes. That is probably a good way to look at it. Of course, your fatigue will rise anyway. After four or six weeks of this, your fatigue will go up, you'll need a deload, you'll recycle, but then you look back on that program and you count the number of sets average that you did per muscle. And you say, wow, that was really like 10 sets per week for chest where I used to do 20. And you look back at how your progressions worked with 20 sets for the past few months. And then you look at this past month and see how it went for 10. Oh God, I actually got a lot stronger <laughs> and I'm physically bigger. My pumps are better. My training is better. Everything's better. There's your answer. If you think, okay, 10 was pretty good and I'm strong, but I feel like I could be getting better pumps. I feel like I could still milk some more growth out. Hey, no worries. In the next meso, slowly try to work up from 10 sets on average to 15 sets on average. Don't just go back running to 20. That is a disaster. It's almost like uh, uh, running back to, like I said, like an abusive relationship. You're like, he'll love me again, Mr. High Volume. No, 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 no. If high volume was really nasty to you and it worked okay, but if this lower volume works better, hey, listen, like start from here and work up slow if even you need to work up at all. Because remember, more volume isn't better. The right amount of volume is better. The right amount for you. How do you check if it's the right amount? Well, is the training process resulting in really good rep PRs and really good feelings in the gym? If it is, you're on the fucking right track. There's not a magical reason to think like, oh, more will still be better. You know, it's like if you go to a restaurant, have a really good meal, you're like, oh, oh, this is great. Put the fork down. Oh, that was perfect. And someone's like, hey, another serving of soup. And you're like, but then I, I just had that soup. It was amazing, but I'm done. They're like, no, no, you want more soup. Yes, more soup now. And you're like, this is crazy. But people do that to themselves with volume. You think, wow, I had a great, a huge progression doing 12 sets of quads per week. The biggest progression I've ever had. I repeated that for another month. I got another big set of PRs. Should I go back to doing 18? Why would you say that? Try 13 or 14, maybe. And if the progression is a little worse, go back to 12. That's how you got to rig this. It's all about long view auto regulation. After many of such of these phases, you'll start to develop a pretty good idea, pretty objectively, about which volume averages give you the best meso to meso long term performance gains. For example, you could have a situation in which 10 sets of chest work per week, let's say on average, makes you have a very low fatigue environment, but doesn't grow a ton of muscle. Grow some, but not a ton. So your first meso goes real well because you're fresh for the first time in your life. But then second or third mesos after that, they kind of peter out. You can have another situation where the high volume one, where it's 20 sets per week and you're just slowly making gains, but you're slogging along, crazy fatigue, bad pumps, et cetera. If you realize 15 sets a week really just gets you the best results overall, that's your new home base. That's where you discover 10, 10 is not enough. 20 is, both are survivable. These All of these are within your minimum effective to, to maximum recoverable window, but there's parts of that window you can exploit better than other parts. Some is a little too little, some is too much, some is just right. So break into that stupid house the bear had and the bears had in Goldilocks and you know what I'm saying? I just get like a auto shotgun because if the bears are in there, you'll at least eat that. I'm not saying kill the bears, but they're dangerous animals. If they don't want to give up their soup, <laughs> shoot like you know, the, the kid bear right in front of mama bear. And she's like, no, nah, when the dad's like, oh, could you do this to our family? And you're like, holy shit, I, fairy tales are fucked up. In any case, don't just look at one mesocycle by itself. You did a high volume phase, then you did a low volume phase. The low volume phase went great. You're like, that's it. I said, I'm a low volume guy. Are you though? Maybe all of the muscle you gained came from the high volume phase. And when the low fatigue of a volume phase allowed you to show that muscle off, that's what got you the big pumps. That's what got you the big PRs. Another two mesos of low volume, you can be like, ah, I, I'm not progressing much. I got to this new level, but I didn't progress much. Whereas if you had an intermediate volume between the ultra high and ultra low, you could both have had an amazing first meso after the high volume thing and progressed, progressed, progressed. So low volumes 
can seem like winners because they don't produce a lot of fatigue. And if you had a lot of fatigue, they make you instantly much greater, but they might not be the answer to long-term because they just don't build much muscle. Looking at strings is the best, taking all muscle, all the volumes into consideration in future plans. And at some point, you may get to a situation where you've had great results. You've altered the volume over many months since your last volume reset. You're looking at it now and you're thinking, fuck, I'm back to high volumes again because your sensitivity will drop over time. So it's natural to raise your volumes over time. And you're saying, I'm back in that place I was eight months ago where I think I'm doing too much. Hey, guess what? You do another volume reset, just like we described, it's going to wash you out, you get a new baseline, and you go from there. And because that volume reset gives you so much time to do low volume, it's great for injury healing, it's great for injury prevention, it's great for long-term motivation, because if you have times during the year where you're really not training super hard, it fucking brings that fire back like crazy. And then you go into another foray of starting with lower volumes and working your way up to a really great midpoint where you get your best results. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions below and we'll see you next time.